Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. When you think of Antarctica and its fabled harsh topography, the, the first image that you probably conjure up is that of an uninhabited and brutally cold landmass blanketed in a year-round sheet of ice, a landscape so unwelcoming and severe that its human habitation is limited to a paltry population of 1,000 to 5,000 people who really only reside at this place for the purpose of scientific research, or they just really love penguins. You may even picture dry Antarctica as a frozen desert, one that is prone to to blizzards and high intensity storms which have earned it the distinction of being the windiest continents on our planet. Perhaps you even envision it as an incredibly remote corner of the earth suitable only for the survival of certain types of organisms and animals such as some bacteria, fungi, penguins, and seals. But whatever may be your imagery of Antarctica, the odds are that it's probably not going to be a, a land of exuberant forests. Because the thing is, Antarctica was not always so dry and frigid as we know it today. Because millions of years ago, it experienced a warmer climate that was indeed home to lush woods, a claim backed up by the recent discovery of 280 million year old tree fossils. So how did this one-time land of thriving trees convert itself into the barren landmass of today? To understand this, we're going to have to go back all the way to the supercontinent of Gondwana, which was formed by the amalgamation of several of the continental fragments of an older supercontinent named Rodinia in the late Neoproterozoic era that ranged from 1000 to 540 MA or Mega Enum or 1000 to 541 million years ago. Situated in the southern hemisphere, Gondwana comprised several landmasses including South America, Africa, Madagascar, Australia, Arabia, and India. Antarctica too was a constituent of this massive southern hemisphere landmass forming its center around which the other continents were assembled. It remained incorporated within Gondwana until the latter's prehistoric disintegration which led to the split of Antarctica around 25 million years ago. The existence of flora and ancient life forms on Antarctica during the time Antarctica was a part of Gondwana and when it was situated further north, the icy continent was a relatively warmer place because of its partial positioning in the northern hemisphere and its location at the equator. The continent's then tropical or temperate climate was conducive to the growth of many forests and ancient life forms, including seafloor invertebrates, trilobites, and land plants. The southernmost continent also boasted an abundance of seed plants. So basically, it was a land of swamps and, and, and lush forests until the cooling of Antarctica, which was triggered by the continental spread, which altered the oceanic currents. And because of this, the first ice appeared in Antarctica during its separation from Australia and New Guinea in the Eocene epoch. However, it was not until 34 million years ago when the continent became permanently covered in ice which replaced its lush forests. And this finding is really important now because many researchers are of the opinion that the disappearance of the polar forests from the face of the Earth was an aftermath of the Permian-Triassic extinction events, a major catastrophic wipeout that led to the elimination of 70 to 90 percent of the Earth's marine and terrestrial species. And that extinction is thought to have been induced by massive emission of greenhouse gas. So by finding this ancient forest and studying it, researchers can better understand how greenhouse gases and climate change actually affect life on Earth. Anyway, really cool story. Thought you guys might like it. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you later.